Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's second front load and another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the disclaimers, and I got to go off a little bit. So you remember when you when I said, right, uh, when ableism or other stupid crap comes my way, even if it's a depth supporter, I still call it out, right? Well, one of the things that have been brought to my attention, again, again, is people first language. Something that I'm intimately familiar with. People first language was something that was developed within and it became the norm for the medical models in the service industry and service to the state. It's the concept that instead of saying a Downs kid to a person with Down syndrome, the concept of we're people first. Which I understand. Okay, I'll give you that. But here's the thing. The majority of the neurodiverse movement prefer identity first language. Identity first language acknowledges that my disability is not something separate from me. It's not something that I can carry around in a handbag that I can just, you know, take it off whenever I want to. It's not a separate entity from me. It's a part of me. It's how my mind works. It's how I see the world. It's my perception in how not only I see my world, but how I see others. It's literally what makes up my brain okay there is no separation from me in my diagnosis we are one we are the same because the person the individual that is sitting in front of you right now if i never had that diagnosis would not be the same person it'd be somebody completely different I don't know who that person would be, but it wouldn't be me. Many people in the autistic community have been bullied, harassed, ad nauseum by people who are not autistic, who work in the service industry or their parents that will yell at us. Get this, yell at us. Because we prefer to call ourselves autistic instead of going with the people first person with autism. These individuals, when we try to first start with speaking to them kindly, will then bully, harass, harass, and bully. It's a simple thing, really. We in the autistic community, in the neurodiverse community, understand that some people prefer people first language. For those individuals who do, please refer to them in that manner. On the flip side, if an individual with a disability says they prefer identity first language, Do not lecture us on it. Do not target us because of it. Do not try and sit there from your place of privilege and try to tell us that we're wrong. Because you're not the one with the diagnosis. I am. Means I get to choose. Okay? It's the same thing that they pull with the trans community and everywhere else. You want to know why the trans and autistic community are like this conservatives? 
It's because no matter how different we are, especially those of us who actually are CIS and autistic, though I don't understand what their lives are like, one thing we have in common, being forced to create a persona, being forced to mask, being forced to pretend to be something we're not. If you think that doesn't cross over, I don't know what to tell you, but it does. What do you think ABA is? It's all about forcing autistics to be something that we're not, to make the other people around us more comfortable. What does that sound like? Now, I understand some of the individuals are older, like my mom, for example. Does she double down on stupid because of how she grew up? No. She acknowledges and will tell the individual, I understand I'm a little old and sometimes I may forget, so I'm just going to choose to refer to you by your name. So far, she has not had any backlash from this. So what I'm getting to in all this ramblings here, the individual that made this statement was not in any way trying to preach to me. Like some of the others on the Bird app have ad nauseum. I'm not going to bash them for that. But it did bring it to mind. My diagnosis, my choice. If I choose to accept that autism is a part of me, if I choose to accept that it is the very framework that forms my unique perception of the world and the people around me, and I choose to take that as a part of me and refer to myself as autistic instead of with a person with autism, don't lecture me or anybody else who prefers identity first language that we are getting it wrong. Okay? First off, people are getting offended over a diagnosis that they don't have by people who actually do have the diagnosis who have the right to refer to ourselves however we want. Are we trying to force you to accept our language instead? No, for God's sake, get over yourselves. Refer to an individual how they prefer to be referred to. It's not rocket science, it's not difficult. Or just don't use the terms at all and use our name. Simple. It's real simple. It shouldn't be this political lightning rod that it has become, but I guess that's the world we live in now. This never used to be a problem. Back in the whole non-PC culture days, nobody had a problem with me because we still had a part of it in the 2000s. Nobody had a problem with me referring to myself as autistic. Nobody. Nobody. But now, all of a sudden, it's become a problem because certain people want to fight labels. Fight labels all you want to. You just don't get to change mind to benefit you. All right. Now to the disclaimers. God. Just refer to people how they prefer to be referred to. It's not hard. It's polite. And y'all overcomplicate it way more than it needs to be. It's simple. Keep it simple. In the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroquestic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much. They have threatened Neuroquestic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. 
Well, folks, Neuroplastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there is the Ozarks' first article in regards to the Agape boarding school situation, a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has been pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys up on multiple. Again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault with the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after drag queens and trying and failing to defund public libraries to actually do his job. And you got a governor. Oh, God. Help of our governor, all right? Read that article. Share it on all your social media. We got the all pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral shade of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Dutchburg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? All right, trigger warning. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and we speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, parental supervision is advised, all right? Okay, folks, so this is a new one. This is from Freda Brown, PhD in Educational and Behavioral Consultant. This is a consultant report that's from 1999. I bring it up because they like to pull this crap that this all happened after Andre. No, I'm sorry, but no. So we're going to go ahead and read through this document and thank our God in heaven that it is not another word salad by Dr. Matthew Israel. So let's get to it, shall we? Purpose and background of consultation. The purpose of my consultation in this report is to review and analyze the educational and behavioral management plans and methods that have been designed and implemented for blank. As professor of special education with 25 years of experience working with individuals with significant disabilities, including severe behavioral problems and severe intellectual disabilities. I've published numerous articles in referred journals, chapters, and three books in the areas of behavior management and curriculum, serve as associate editor of two major referred, sorry, Refereed Journals in the Field, Journal of Positive Behavioral Interventions, and Journal of the Association of Persons with Severe Handicaps. I'm on the editorial board of three other referred journals, consult with families, and speak at conferences and seminars across the country. This report is based on a one-hour observation of blank on November the 8th, 1999. A comprehensive review of a variety of reports from the Board of Cooperative Educational Services Division of Special Education, e.g. psychological evaluations, behavioral progress summaries, behavioral intervention plans, individual service plans, related service evaluations, and annual reviews, a variety of reports related to her program at the Judge Rotenberg Center. The proposed behavior modification treatment plan, behavior program evaluation of June the 4th, 1999, Dr. X's report of June 10th, 1999, individual education plan, an interview with Dr. Blank, Miss Blank, case manager, Miss Blank, case manager. In addition, this consultant voluntarily received a shock which was administered by Dr. Blank. This action was taken to understand more objectively the plan program that blank has experienced. Here's the thing though, this tactic is so manipulative. Does anybody think that Dr. Matthew Israel is actually going to allow these individuals to experience the shock 
at the same level that the kids in his center do. You think he's going to let oh, reporters to do that? No, he's not. This dude is not going to do anything that's going to expose the truth. He's not going to do anything that puts his precious reputation at risk. You can't say that you're actually objective if you're not experiencing it the way that the students are experiencing it. In a controlled setting where the doctor can control the setting, the power, you will, of the shocks being administered to you. You see the problems with that, right? See the problem with that? Because I see the problem with that. Let's go on here. Hopefully this does not turn out to be a bigger bunch of crap than I hope, hope against hope. This report will be organized into two main sections. The first section will address X's behavior program plan and discuss its development and implementation. The second section will discuss the educational program developed for blank. In general, the report reflects this consultant's professional judgment that the extraordinary means of behavior suppression, contingent electric shock, water spay, that are used with blank are not appropriate or justified. Oh, thank God someone has a brain. Whew. These extraordinary measures are used in the absence of what is now considered standard practices of effective behavior support. While there are many components referred to as positive reinforcement written in X's program, these appear to be perfunctory, taking away food, possessions, privileges, or rights, just so that these can be given back in return for good behavior, and then taken away again to punish bad behavior subverts the principle of positive reinforcement. Thank you! Remember when I told you this dude didn't know positive behavioral reinforcement, let alone how to utilize it? This is a professional here, backing me up. Further current standard educational practice have not been implemented. Thank you. Because of direct relationship between educational environment, curriculum, materials, instructional strategies, and problem behavior, it's critical that this be considered as well. It is this consultant's professional judgment that X's behavioral and educational program are not preparing her for less restrictive environments, thus ensuring her stay in the most restrictive setting, JRC, so they can keep making money off of us. You see? Follow the wallet, folks. It will never fail you. It is apparent from the records reviewed and this consultant's observation that what is being taught to X is not preparing her to engage in skills necessary to function in a natural environment or in the adult world outside the JRC. You're singing my song. You're singing my song. Because the only thing that JRC's program can actually legitimately prepare you for is lifelong being stuck in one of the sheltered workshops where you're making way way below the minimum wage, being stuck on Social Security and Medicaid for the rest of your life. Why is this bad, you may ask me? Because as a person who was stuck in a job program on Medicaid and on Social Security, it stinks you quite very much into accepting to live a life beneath the poverty line. Okay? It puts you in a situation where sometimes you have to choose between the ability to get food because your food can't card ran out and being able to afford medication or being able to afford rent. I've lived that life. I know. None of the things that they do at that place in any way, shape, or form even remotely resemble any form of transition program that I have ever been a part of, let alone any of them that I've helped design myself. It's a joke and a very bad one. But let's move on, shall we? 
That is, even if X were to admit little or no problem behavior, she would be left without a behavioral repertory to assist her to live a life in which she may meaningfully participate in less restrictive environments or social world of individuals with less significant disabilities or no disabilities. They're giving her no tools, folks. They are giving her no tools. What do I mean by this? They're not giving her anything in any capacity that is going to assist her in being able to navigate and communicate with the world around her. Okay? Speaking full sentences, well, two words would suffice. <sighs> you see where I'm going, right? Right? I mean, that's all in the black and white there. That is a person with more PhDs and areas of expertise than Dr. Matthew Israel will ever have. Putting it right there in the black and white. Saying all the things that we have said on this channel numerous times. It makes us wonder what's going to be coming out of these reports next, doesn't it? With that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out so we can get to the next video. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, folks, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.